Good morning, fifth grader. Today I will be reading April 13th's NTI Day packet. Your NTI Day daily overview. Math, pages 3 through 7. Reading, page 8 through 13. Writing, page 14 through 16. Social studies, page 17 through 23. And Spanish, page 24 through 28. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm telling you it's going to be worth it by Art Williams. Mathematics Lesson Overview Learning Target I can multiply multi-digit whole numbers using the standard algorithm. Daily Learning Plan This lesson will focus on multiplying whole numbers using the standard algorithm. In order to be successful in this lesson, you will need to follow each of the steps in the learning plan below. Today you will Read the provided notes, page 4, to gain understanding for today's learning target. Complete the learning target practice, pages 5 through 6, using the notes from today's learning target. Answer each of the questions. To show your understanding of today's learning target, complete all parts of the practice. This is an opportunity to engage the content to gain a deeper understanding of what we are doing. Complete the exit slip, page 7, to demonstrate your understanding of today's learning target. Mathematics, learning target notes, learning target. I can multiply multi-digit whole numbers using the standard algorithm. Let me show you. Find the product of 126 and 23. Number one, set up the standard algorithm. Number two, multiply the ones, 126 times three. Number three, add a placeholder zero. Multiply the tens, 126 times 20. Add the two products. For a three-digit multiplier, you will add two placeholder zeros. Number seven, multiply the hundreds, and number eight, add the three products. A couple of talking points. An important skill set for multiplying multi-digit whole numbers is knowing your basic facts. Being able to efficiently, and more importantly, accurately recall your basic multiplication facts is essential for this mathematical skill. With the amount of numbers involved in solving these types of problems, organization is crucial. To help organize your work, use the grid paper to keep your numbers in line and to prevent a mistake. Let's practice. Using the standard algorithm, solve 152 times 27 Pretend you were showing a fourth grade student how to multiply multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. List the steps needed to solve part A. Write a word problem using 152 times 27. Using the standard algorithm, solve 3,521 times 361. Pretend you were showing a fourth grade student how to multiply multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. List three areas within the process where you think mistakes are common. Write a word problem using 3,521 times 361. Let's see what you know. Number one, find the product of 422 and 38. Number two, in college basketball's greatest place to watch basketball, Rupp Arena, each section has 724 seats. If the lower arena has 18 sections, how many seats are in the lower arena of Rupp Arena? Number three, the Louisville Zoo is hosting a month-long focus on getting schools to visit the zoo. 
Each week, the zoo will host 52 elementary schools. If each school has 415 students, how many students will visit the school in a week during this month? Reading. Lesson Overview. Learning Target. I can use specific details in a text to compare and contrast two or more settings in a story. Daily Learning Plan. This packet focuses on similarities and differences in two or more settings. In this lesson, you will compare and contrast settings in a fiction story. In order to be successful in this lesson, you will need to follow each of the steps in the learning plan below. Today you will read the provided notes, page 9, to gain understanding for today's learning target. Complete the learning target practice, pages 10 through 11. Using the notes from today's learning target, answer each of the questions. To show your understanding of today's learning target, complete all parts of the practice. This is an opportunity to engage the content to gain a deeper understanding of what we are doing. Complete the exit slip, page 12 through 13, to demonstrate your understanding of today's learning target. Reading, learning target notes. I can use specific details in a text to compare and contrast two or more settings in a story. Using details to compare and contrast settings in a story will help you better understand what that story is about. The setting of a story is when and where a story takes place. When you compare and contrast settings, you consider how the scenes are alike and different. The setting affects what happens in the story. The setting can change. The characters react to the setting. Look for clue words and pictures. Place, where, home, store, school. Time, when, morning, May 4th, 1903. Environment, what, cold, dark, stormy. Let's practice. Once the setting and descriptive details of a location are revealed in a story, they often set a particular mood for a story. So it is important to pay attention to these details. The perfect picture. Carly held her breath as the broad-tailed hummingbird fluttered near the cluster of wildflowers. She stared into her camera, waiting. A fly landed on Carly's arm. She flicked it away with a finger. The bird flew near a flower. The flower wasn't red enough, though. Carly waited. The bird flew to another flower. This one was too small. Finally, the bird hesitated over the largest, reddest flower. Carly began to snap pictures. She was certain that these would be some of the best pictures she had ever taken. Carly raced home and uploaded the pictures onto her computer. She couldn't wait to see the results. But when the pictures came up on the screen, she was disappointed. Carly studied them and then opened her photo journal. She wrote hummingbird pictures. The bird's wings are a blur, not enough detail on flower. Bird isn't close enough to the flower in any shot. Why aren't, <clears throat> why aren't these the way I thought they would be? What are the settings in this story? Underline the descriptive details that describe these settings. Sometimes settings change within a story. <clears throat> when a setting changes, the mood often changes too. For example, a story that starts out with a student in school detention but then switches to an after-school birthday party probably has a change in mood. Determining the similarities and differences between settings can help you determine a change in mood, if there is one. Compare and contrast the settings in this story. How are the settings alike and how are they different? Practice answers. The picture perfect.
So in this, there are underlined examples, hummingbird, wildflowers, local park, light from the sun, cool breeze blue, messy bedroom. The setting in paragraph one is a local park near wildflowers. The sunlight is pretty and a cool breeze is blowing. The setting in paragraph two is Carly's messy bedroom. Both settings involve Carly and her photographer. The first setting is outdoors at a park. The second setting is indoors. Let's see what you know. Read the passage below and choose the best answer choice for each question. Camp Pinnacook. 11 year old Henry lived in Manchester, New Hampshire. The apartment was small for his mom, two sisters, and himself. Henry didn't have a bedroom and slept on the couch. The building was on a busy city street. One day, his teacher, Miss Jeffers, asked him if he would like to go to a boys' camp for the summer. Miss Jeffers said that she had talked to Henry's mom about Camp Pinnacook. It was on an island in Lake Winnipesaukee. The camp would last a month. There would be swimming, boating, hiking, and other activities. Henry knew about camps from his neighbor James and said yes. On June 22nd, Henry met a group of other campers at a dock. They got on a boat to the island, and after a short trip, they reached their destination. Camp Pinnacook was different from the city because there were trees everywhere. Henry was shy because he did not know the other boys in his cabin. Then Nathan, a camper in his cabin, offered to share his video game during leisure time. It was an hour in the evening that did not have anything scheduled for the campers. The two boys became friends. The boys followed a routine every day began with swimming. Then they worked on their projects. Later, they practiced with their sports team. Before the cabin group went on a three-day hike in the mountains, they took a course in survival skills. The boys learned how to put out a fire and tell direction from the sun's position. After three days on the trail, Henry felt he could rely on his outdoor skills. He had slept in a tent, cooked over a fire, and hiked miles over a rough trail. At the end of the month, Henry sadly said goodbye to his friends. He was proud of his skills and has new self-respect for his own abilities. He hoped he could return next summer. What text evidence shows that the setting of Henry's home and the setting of Camp Pinnacook are not alike? A. Then he signed up for the softball team. B. Later they practiced with their sports team. C. In the afternoon, he chose the painting class. Or D. Camp Pinnacook was different from the city because there were trees everywhere. What is one way the camp is different from Henry's neighborhood? A. The camp is less crowded. B. There is less to do at camp. C. Henry has his own bed at camp rather than the couch. And D. There are no other boys in Henry's neighborhood. How are the three-day hike and first days in camp different? A. On the hike, the boys sleep in tents. B. The boys have relaxation time only on the hike. C. There is a cookout only on the first night in camp. And D. Henry does not have to try to get along with others on the hike. Writing. Lesson Overview. Learning target. I can write an opinion piece on a topic supporting my point of view with reasons and evidence. Weekly learning plan. This week we'll focus on opinion writing. This is your opportunity to practice the power of using your thoughts to effectively communicate your opinion. 
In order to allow you to work on the different elements of a complete writing piece, each day has its own focus. By Thursday, you will have a completed opinion piece and be ready to try one in one sitting on Friday. This week, you will Monday, read the prompt and create a plan using a graphic organizer Foursquare. This is your chance to brainstorm ideas and design the flow of your piece. Tuesday, write the introduction. Be sure to grab your reader's attention with a great hook and state the purpose of your writing piece. Wednesday, write the body of your piece using strong supporting details such as examples, explanations, and experiences. Make your plan come alive in your piece. Thursday, write your conclusion. This is your chance to bring all of your thoughts to an end and leave the reader thinking. And on Friday, Practice a new prompt and complete it all at one time. Time yourself. Try to complete it in 30 minutes. Using the opinion prompt below, analyze using a Foursquare organizer. Make sure to fill all sections in to organize your writing. Writing situation. For, de for decades, people believed our solar system had nine planets. But in 2006, astronomers decided that Pluto was a dwarf planet. Not all astronomers accept the changes to Pluto's status. What do you think? Should Pluto still be called a planet? Write an editorial for Popular Science Junior Magazine in which you sound off your opinion. Be sure to use solid reasons backed by specific details to support your belief. Try to include some domain-specific vocabulary to make your opinion stronger. Consult a dictionary or a thesaurus to assist you in spelling great appropriate words correctly. Be prepared for someone to look over your spelling. Here's your pre-writing space. Social studies. Lesson overview. Learning target. I can explain how places and regions in the United States are defined by their human characteristics. I can describe patterns of human settlement in the early development of the United States. Daily Learning Plan This packet focuses on the foundations of the different regions of the United States. In order to be successful in this lesson, you will need to follow each of the steps in the learning plan below. Today you will read the provided passage, page 20 through 23, to gain understanding for today's learning target. Complete the learning target practice, page 24 through 25. Using the notes from today's learning target, answer each of the questions. To show your understanding of today's learning target, complete all parts of the practice. This is an opportunity to engage the content to gain a deeper understanding of what we are doing. Complete the exit slip, page 26, to demonstrate your understanding of today's learning target. <coughs> the Northeast. The History. The Northeast region is made up of the following states. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. <clears throat> the first six states listed are also commonly called New England. Native people had been living on this land for thousands of years before Europeans arrived. Norwegians were the first to explore what is now Maine. They arrived around the year 1200. The Norwegians traded goods with the native people who lived there, but they did not attempt to settle the area. Among the earliest of the European settlers were people known as pilgrims. They arrived in Massachusetts on a ship called the Mayflower in 1620. This is a painting showing the arrival of pilgrims. 
They left England hoping for a religious freedom far away from the ruling king. The native people and the settlers had complicated relationships. Sometimes they were friendly and traded goods with each other. Other times they fought deadly battles. The fighting between the settlers and the Native American people lasted for well over a hundred years. This entire region is home to many important events in American history. Massachusetts was one of the original 13 colonies and is where the American Revolution began. The Declaration of Independence, for example, was signed in Philadelphia on July 4, 1776. The Battle of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania in 1863 was an important historical event of the American Civil War. In more recent history from the late 1800s through 1954, Ellis Island was the entry point welcoming immigrants to the United States. Located near the Statue of Liberty in Upper New York Bay, over 12 million immigrants passed through on their way to becoming citizens. Today, New York City is known as a melting pot. That is because people from many different cultures make up this area. The Northeast region, the economy. This is a picture of a Maine lobster. The Northeast region has urban, rural, and suburban communities. It is very densely populated. Since almost all of the states are on the Atlantic coast, the fishing industry is significant to the economy in this region. Maine, in particular, is known for its lobsters. Shipyards, where ships are built, are also found near the water. The rocky soil in the upper portion of this region makes it difficult to grow many crops. A limited amount of crops will grow there, such as potatoes, apples, blueberries, and cranberries. Dairy farming is found in that area, too. In the lower portion of this region, the land is fertile. Farmers in those states grow grain, oats, corn, cabbage, and many other fruits and vegetables. There are many forests in the northeast region. Trees have multiple uses for products that we use every day. Maple syrup is made from the sap of maple trees. Vermont is the largest producer of maple syrup in the U.S. When the trees are cut down, the pulp wood can be made into paper. Lumber can be used to make houses, furniture, and a lot of other things. However, people must be careful not to cut down too many trees. It takes a long time for trees to grow really big. Mining and production are also key to the economy in this region. Mining takes natural resources from the ground. In the Northeast, coal, granite, and marble are all mined from the ground. In addition, people work in factories making items such as electronics, steel, chemicals, clothing, and candy. Tourism is another important industry for this region. The beaches attract many vacationers throughout the year. People visit the mountains to ski and hike. New York City is visited by tourists from all around the world. People go to the city to see interesting attractions such as the, State of, the Statue of Liberty and Times Square. Many tourists go there because of the world-famous fashion industry or to see Broadway plays. Natural Resources Natural resources are materials that are found in the environment which are not made by humans. People can then use the natural resources to make other helpful things. There are many natural resources found in this region, including coal, granite, marble, iron, ore, and forests, lumber. Water is a natural resource that is renewable. The Northeast Region Landmarks Landmarks are important places. They can be man-made things such as a monument, they can be historical locations that help to remind us of important events that happen there. They can also be things created by nature that are unique in some way. There are many landmarks in the 11 states that make up the Northeast region. Here we will take a look at just a few of them. 
This is a picture of Niagara Falls, New York State, and the other side is Ontario at the Canadian border. Niagara Falls were formed when glaciers receded at the end of the last ice age. The falls aren't extremely high, but they are very wide. They are located on the Niagara River, which drains Lake Erie into Lake Ontario. The falls are known for both their beauty and for being a source of hydropower. The power that results from the energy of falling or fast-moving water is called hydropower. It can be used to create electricity for people to use in their homes and businesses. This is a great way to create energy, and it is not bad for the environment. The water's power is used without creating dangerous pollution. Plus, it is a renewable resource, so we won't run out of it naturally. This is a picture of the White House in Washington, D.C. Our first president, George Washington, chose the site of our nation's capital. The White House is the official home to our president. It took eight years to build the house and was first occupied by John Adams on November 1, 1800. It was originally called the President's Palace or the President's House. Theodore Roosevelt gave the White House its official name in 1901. During the War of 1812, British soldiers sailed up the Potomac River and set fire to the White House. Before doing so, however, they marched right into the President's dining room and helped themselves to food that had been left on the table. It took three years to rebuild. The White House has 132 rooms. One of the rooms is called the Oval Office. This is where the President works. Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. Plymouth Rock is an important symbol in American history. The Plymouth Colony was one of the first European settlements in the land that eventually became the United States. It was a settlement of pilgrims who fled England because of religious persecution. Legend states that a rock, now called Plymouth Rock, was the landing place of those pilgrims when they stepped off their ship called the Mayflower in 1620. Guided Notes Directions Follow along as your teacher discusses the Northeast presentation. Fill out all the missing information in this packet. Refer to the numbered diagram below and list the 11 states in the Northeast region. The history. When did the first European settlers arrive? Where were the first shots of the American Revolution fired? The climate. Describe the four seasons in this region. Guided notes continued. The land. List at least six examples of the types of land that are found in the Northeast. What made the Appalachian Mountains shorter? Economy. What are some of the major industries found in the Northeast? Natural resources. What is a renewable resource? What is one example of a renewable resource found in the Northeast religion? region? Landmarks. What are landmarks? List three examples of landmarks found in the Northeast region. Number one. The northern parts of the Northeast region have rocky soil and a cool climate. Farmers use greenhouses to grow crops such as flowers and shrubs. This is an example of which of the following? A. An adaption to the physical environment. B. A modification to the environment. C. An impact of modifications to the physical environment. For D, both B and C are correct. Number two. The forests of the Northeast were an important resource to early Native Americans and settlers. They would cut down the trees and use the wood to build their homes and villages. This is an example of which of the following. A, 
an impact of modifications to the physical environment, b a modification to the physical environment, c a restrictions to human activities, or d an adaption to the physical environment. Number three, crowding is a problem in most cities within the Northeast. Cars and trucks crowd city streets. They can cause traffic jams and air pollution. This is an example of which of the following? A, a restriction to human activities. B, an impact of modifications to the physical environment. C, an adaptation to the physical environment or D, a promotion of human activities. Spanish lesson overview. If you're a junction or parable student, you can email Mr. Hodge at josh.hodge at boyle.kwaschools.us. Facebook page, Spanish Arizo. If you're a Woodlawn student, you can email Miss Workman, Savannah Workman at boyle.kwaschools.us. You can Instagram her at Senorita Workman BC, and you can Facebook her at Woodlawn Elementary Spanish. You can also contact Mrs. Acevedo, stephanie.acevedo at boyle.kwaschools.us, Facebook Woodlawn Elementary Spanish. Instructions number one match Spanish days of the week words with English definition. Number two calendar. Draw a picture that tells what you do each day. Then translate the sentences into Spanish using the word bank provided. Number three, match Spanish months of the week words with English definition. Then, using the word bank, write the month of the year in Spanish. Number four, write the dates in Spanish. The first one has been done for you. Days of the week, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, Thursday, and Saturday. In this section, you will put them in order. Name and date. Draw a picture or write some words that tell what you do on each day of the week. Here's your word bank. If, tomorrow, today, was, is, and yesterday. Refer to this word bank to translate the following words. Translate the following into Spanish. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Yesterday was Friday. If today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday. Match the days of the month, or days of, or months of the year rather, with their uh, Spanish counterpart. This is December, January, November, October, July, April, March, February, May, August. June and September. Using the word bank here that has the um, months of the year in Spanish, write the correct answer beside the English uh, name for the months. Write the dates in Spanish. The first one has been done for you. March 2nd, April 7th, May 29th, June 12th, July 29th, October 14th, and September 13th. And that concludes April 13th's NTI Day. If you have any questions, please contact your fifth grade teachers.